everybody it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we are going to be doing an absolutely beautiful soap. It's going to be a pastel rainbow soap. I've been waiting to do this for quite some time. Now I do have some absolutely beautiful colors. These ones have been given to me from a lovely Aussie company. So let me grab them and I'll show you. So here are the gorgeous colours. Don't they look beautiful? And you can see the company here, which is called um, Crafty Space on here, AU. So you can check them out. I will leave all the links for this absolutely wonderful company. And on the back, it tells you exactly what they are. So this is how they've come to me. They did gift these to me, which was really, really sweet of them. They also gifted me some uh, glitters and things like that. But we're not going to use the glitters. We're just going to use these. I'm also going to be using a little bit of of titanium dioxide just to kind of lower them because I don't want mine super bright I want them a little bit more of a pastel kind of color and now I will show you how I've set up everything um, just in front of me I do have all of my butters and things like that set out now I will tell you that my particular soap recipe for this one is a super nourishing uh, you know quite a heavy buttered soap so um, don't panic when you see all of the shea butters cacao and so on inside of these but anyway let's get going and remember if you're on my patreon the recipe will be over there for everybody along with uh, the percentages as well so that you can change it if you want because we are going to be making a recipe that is um, 6,400 grams so it's a huge recipe but I will leave the percentages so that you can change it all just go over to patreon and check that out so anyway let me show you what I'm up to now let me show you all the beautiful butters so here they are and in each one of these this is going to be each layer so you can see that I have divided it up and there's extra ones to the side so there is actually five of these so I do have like I said a heavy butter in them so if we bring this one forward you'll see so we have some gorgeous uh, cocoa butter some unrefined shea butter both of them are from deluxe shea I love their products I always use them and of course some coconut oil at the bottom which will give us a little bit of hardness and will also give us those bubbles that we want we're going to of course add some olive oil some other oils and I'll kind of go through that as we go along um, in this but like I said if you want the recipe just go over to patreon if you don't want to join patreon just have a look back at my other videos because I give lots of recipes on here and some I don't some I give to patreon but generally a lot of them there is a lot of other recipes if you want one um, just go and search through some of my other videos but let's get going uh, in this gorgeous one so like I said we have shown that I do have some cups here which we are going to make all the colors I do have some titanium dioxide it's pretty easy to get that you can even get it at cake shops now and of course I have my um, colors so we're going to be using a neon green uh, so I'll show you neon green that is what that looks like isn't it bright we're going to be using neon blue which I absolutely love we're also going to be using neon yellow and I'm going to be using neon purple so that's the purple and last but not least my very favorite one which is neon pink so we're going to be using all of those ones dull it down with a bit of titanium dioxide so this is how I do mine I literally weigh everything up into these containers and I just do one layer at a time that way I don't have to stress about it getting too thick um, and you know being too thick for the next layer and so on there's other ways you can do it you could do this in one big go I don't like to do that because it's such a big recipe and if I bugger it up that <laughs> the biggest problem is I've ruined six and a half kilos um, you know of soap so that's why I do it this way so let's have a look what else we have here now in this bucket here this is my lye so I've got a couple buckets um, once we do the first or second layer then I will set up the next lot of lye so like I said I separate all of it it's just my process everybody may have a different process but that's how I actually do mine so like I said we've got all of this done we've got our lye sitting here cooling down next we will start to measure up some oils and we'll get going with our very first layer 
Now we are going to be starting the first layer. So here of course is my um, little uh, slow cooker. So I'm going to just literally turn this on. We're going to pop in all of our hard oils and butters, the things that we talked about before. So let's just pop them in. Uh, it won't take very long uh, just to, you know, melt these down. So I'm going to put this on slow. And why this is on slow, this is when usually I'll go and measure up everything else I need to measure up, you know, such as your olive oil and so on. And then we can sort out the colours and decide exactly what we're going to do. And we need to work out the layer of the colours so that we know which one we're going to start with first. So anyway, this one's on. Let's pop on the lid and we'll leave this just for a minute. Now, remember we just put all of our hard oils into the slow cooker, so we're going to just let them very slowly melt down. In the meantime, what I actually want to do is we actually need to go and measure everything else. So I have my bucket on my scale here. I've torn out the scale, and remember that if you do one thing in grams, you need to do everything in grams. So we're going to do everything in grams, even though these are liquids. So the first thing we want to add in is this uh, castor oil. Let me move the bucket out the way a minute. And we are going to make sure that we do everything right. So remember, the one that we're doing now, this is just for layer one. And I'm going to do the same thing for every single layer. So for our castor oil, I want 51 grams. So I, like I said, everything is already on the scale, you know, so that we can measure this out. If you think you might make a mistake, I definitely suggest... Um, that you know put it in a small container first but I do so much of this that you really do get used to it so now we've got 51 grams in there I will tear my scale out again um, and now there's a couple other things that I want to add in there so olive oil is going to be my next main component so let's go and grab that so now we need to add, add the olive oil. So it's going to be 717 grams. So let me just pop that in here just so that I remember I'm getting all my numbers right. And I have actually put this through soap calc. It has been designed through soap calc. So make sure anything you're putting through, you need to, you know, once again, pop it through. I know it's annoying, but um, you thank yourself later when everything goes well. Uh, because, you know, a recipe like this does need to go um, the right way. So we are almost there. Making sure I'm doing everything right because I don't want to be pouring in the wrong amount. All right, so that is perfect. And inside my bucket, you can see I've got all my oils in here. And remember, we need to leave room for our hard oils to go in here. And of course, our lye later on. So I have added that bit. Now, what I actually do with this, so we've got our oils in here. What I want to do is take a portion of this out so that I can mix the first color. So that's what we're going to do. And that way, it means that you're not putting extra oils in um, your recipe that haven't been accounted for. So let's take Take this off the scale we will organize our first color and we're going to go from that now before I do my colors this is what I do so I'm going to sort out what I want first so a lot of people would probably want to put the purple blue green pink and so on or usually what they would do is put the green and yellow together because they're closest the purple and the pink together because they are closest and then the blue on the bottom which is basically what I'm going to do so this is going to be our bottom so we're going to start with the blue first um, let me shake this one down a little bit and I do have my cup here ready so now we're and remember this oil is a part of our recipe that we've done here um, I do have to add sodium lactate but obviously I don't want to add that bit into here so really you just need one or two tablespoons um, just of oil so we're just going because remember this is going to go straight back in um, to this and I'm only going to um, take the amount out that I need for the first color and then you'll need to do this process with every single um, other one that we're going to use so I'm going to grab uh, actually I don't need scissors because it has this really easy tear um, and then it has you know you just open it up like this so you just tear off the first bit in these this is how it came and then we'll open this up it's a little bit tight because my hands are a bit sore so let me grab some scissors and um, we'll open it up 
So now we do have our um, oil in here, remember just the tiny bit, and we've got our tablespoon. So this is actually half a tablespoon. So I'm just going to put half a tablespoon in here. Um, so basically, if you're trying to work out colors and how much micas you should put in, you can actually put in one tablespoon per every 500 grams. Um, but of course, it will depend on the color. Um, you know, the only thing is sometimes the color will run out of this and will go into the shower. Somebody may not love that. So I usually put sort of half of what it says I can add. Um, and a bit of a trick, uh, because sometimes these sort of colors, um, because remember we're using fluorescent colors. Um, fluorescent colors can leave little bits behind. So if you've get like a palette knife like this and literally just go across the edge, making sure that you're, um, you know, really pressing down on any particular um, part of it, you know, like all of it. So, you know, just don't leave any lumps and bumps. It's really important. You can also warm up your olive oil. That does help as well. But you can see now it's it's pretty smooth. Um, but, you know, I usually just kind of go around the outside and keep pushing the oil and the mica to the outside. Sometimes this bit is really hard to get off that. It sticks. But if you use like a wet one, um, it's really handy to do that as well. So now we've got our titanium. So look, I usually just shake a tiny bit in there. I mean, it's probably less than quarter of a teaspoon. If you have a look, it's just a few little tiny bits there. Make sure the same thing that you're pressing these all along the sides. Um, because if you don't, then what will actually happen is you'll have streaks of titanium doesn't look very pretty at all um, and you know look if it's in a heat proof container you can actually just put this over the double boil if you want to make totally sure that you've got no lumps and bumps so basically once I've done this I'm going to let this sit aside um, and then of course we need things like um, our hard oils we need them to melt down and then just become room temperature then we can get making the first layer and I'm going to put this in a big slab mold so I'll organize the slab mold I'm going to organize everything and then we'll be ready all right, so we have everything in the bucket. You can see all the oils in here. Now what we're going to be doing is inside here, I have some sodium lactate. This is really going to be helping uh, everything release properly from the mold. So we're just going to add that tiny bit. So basically your sodium lactate, you're just going to add a couple percent, uh, you know, per your recipe. So per oils. So if you're using uh, 100 grams of oil, you're going to use one to three percent of sodium lactate that will kind of give you an idea and look how sweet this little um, spatula is I bought some of these from TK Maxx the other day um, I do love TK Maxx so that's where I've gone in and done all that so now everything is ready uh, for us to pop this in next we are going to pop in the lye we're going to mix it all up then we're going to put some fragrance and of course the color that we want in this aren't we so um, before we do too much more though we're going to give it a bit of a whiz with the lye and then we'll start to add the color uh, into it so let's go we have everything ready let's just pour the light directly into here uh, so it's all ready uh, and I'm just going to go and um, uh, get the last piece of the puzzle So now it is almost done. It has not reached trace, but that's okay because now we want to just go and add in our beautiful blue. So let's just pop this in. I am also going to be adding in our fragrance oil after, but we want to get it a little bit better because my fragrance is a mix of uh, beautiful tropical fruits, um, some guava kind of scent, some pomegranate, 
um, it also does have uh, some peony and a bit of rose in it as well so it's going to be just a really really lovely one now if you want to get all of the mica off the spoon the best thing to do is just mix it within um, the soap and it will actually come off on its own but we don't need to worry too much because I am going to use it to mix it a little bit after and I'll pop it back on my paper towel let's mix all this up again now as I'm going along I just like to go around the edges make sure you get everything mixed super duper well in uh, because we don't want anything that is not mixed and not looking beautiful in there now one thing I will tell you when you're doing um, a soap like mine now you have to remember that the soap we're actually using here my soap is really um, you know high in olive oil because it's a vegan soap it has no animal fats to actually help it or no palm oil to help it get thicker so it does take a little bit longer to come to trace than one that you know like I said has palm oil or um, animal fats in it or tallows and stuff like that but it will still come to trace we don't need to panic too much so let's just keep mixing and uh, make this gorgeous now it's at a very light trace so what we're going to do is add in our fragrance oil I have mixed them all in here there is no vanilla even though it looks a little yellowy it's not um, a vanilla one at all um, and uh, you know the fragrance oil will depend on what the supplier says to how much you can put in lots of people ask me how much to put in some suppliers depending on the fragrance you can put in more some you can put in less it really depends on the fragrance so just go back to your suppliers website and check it out some might say only one percent and some will be five but like I said let's get going and we'll mix the rest of this lovely um soap up all right this is looking beautiful my lovely friends so let's just um you know wipe all this down and as I said you could do this in one big batch if you want I personally don't sometimes I'll actually make something like this over one or two days because it does need um you know like I said it does need all the lines in and to make sure the lines are perfect you really want one to set up um quite well before you start to put the next one in um and um so on so like I said we've double checked that we've got our fragrance in here don't we and we have everything else we want so we have our beautiful slab mold here so now we're just going to pour this layer in and it is super thick which is okay I want it to be thick uh, that way we know it's going to do its job and look beautiful so I will just pop everything in here um, we will smooth it out we don't need to worry too much because we can sort of bang it down a little bit um, and I probably could have put it in before now but um, I just didn't that's okay and um, anyway we're going to make this beautiful aren't we and just give it a tap down now a really important thing to do once we've done this and I've really tapped it a lot um, is just to go along the edges and just because we don't want anything along the edge if there's things along the edge then it's going to leave that on the edge of the soap so I kind of don't really want that We'll go along to scrape off any last little uh, messy bits on the edge. And I'm going to let this set up just a tiny bit before I come back um, with my new, uh, you know, my new one. With my new colour, I should say. But it's looking beautiful. I hope you love this first colour. I think it looks absolutely fab. So now I'm going to be on to the next colour, aren't I? But like I said, I'm going to let this one set up because I have a few things I've got to do. I've got to help my teenage daughter with some homework. Um, that's typical mum's job, isn't it? And um, then we'll be on to the next. So it is the next day. It's early in the morning and I do have all of my oils measured up for layer number two. Now you could have done this in a whole day, but things got a little bit crazy yesterday but that's okay now I do have my separate bucket here this is going to be for the next oil so out of my oils I've already made up we're going to just take a portion out of this so that I can mix up um, my colors you don't need to worry about how much oil you're taking out because it is part of this recipe remember 
Uh, so we're going to pop that aside. Obviously I'm not touching lye or anything like that. That's why I don't have gloves on. Um, but that's okay. So now we've done the blue. I want purple to be my next colour. So once again we're just going to rip off um, you know, the top of these and then we are going to be putting in the same amount. So basically I want to make sure I'm using the same spoon every time because that way it makes it easy if I need to um, replicate this, uh, you know, whole thing. So let me open up this. Yesterday my hands were quite um, oily so I actually couldn't open up the bag which was a little bit annoying wasn't it? But anyway uh, we've done it for today. So now you can see in here that is what we're popping in um, and remember we're also going to be popping in some titanium um, dioxide so I'll make sure I close the lid because I'm absolutely terrible um, with spilling things. I always seem to spill everything. So once again we um, have our little titanium dioxide. We're just going to put a small amount. Um, it's only honestly it's probably one gram uh, and then of course we're going to mix it. Now this is like a little mixing sort of palette so I just give it a mix first. I did talk about this yesterday and then just making sure you know we sort of go and push it along the edges to make sure that all the colors are mixed because in the past when I used different colors especially fluorescence what actually happens is they can leave like a horrible streak uh, when you cut it and that streak just doesn't look very nice and it's just because you know there were tiny lumps that I could barely see so you need to make sure that you really do use something like this and push it around the edges to make sure it's smooth like that and you probably if you're like me like you can just see I splashed something everywhere I have to put my apron on so I don't ruin this new top that I just got from Myers otherwise I will ruin it and then basically I'm just going to set this aside until I put some gloves on, organize all the lye, do the last little bit and then we will be ready. So let me just pop these few things away and um, get some gloves and some glasses on and then we'll be ready for step number two. Now we are ready to go everyone. I have my sodium lactate. We're just going to pour that in. Now let's get ready. Typical me. I spilt something, had to clean it up and come back again. As you can see my hands are purple from um, spilling something. I'm absolutely hopeless, seriously. Uh, but, and it's because, um, you know, I had a tiny few extra things on the bench that I shouldn't have left there. So anyway, we have our little stick blender. Just burp your stick blender, which just means giving it a tap and getting all those extra bits out and then now we're just going to pour our lye in. I have pre-measured everything everybody and the reason I decided to put it in the jug this time is I just thought it would be much easier um, to control. Uh, so and because it's got a spout on it it fits in there quite well um, and I do have my fragrance to the side um, which is just in here. I know it looks purple but it's only because I stirred it with the spoon that had the mica on it because this is also another way to get all the mica off the spoon. Anyway let's just mix this up and then I'm going to bring you back in just a minute. Now it is looking beautiful isn't it? I've added the colour. Let's just add the fragrance, give it a quick mix up and then we're ready to pour the next bit straight into uh, on the top layer. So how exciting. Let's get ready to add number two layer. Now we are going to be adding the second layer. It's super important that you spray it uh, with some rubbing alcohol. It actually will help everything stick together. And let's just pour this one straight in. Uh, and of course, because the bottom one's set up harder, you don't need to worry about it running through the first layer. And that's why I do this this way. Um, you know, look, there's nothing wrong with doing it any way that you like. But I've just personally found that this has actually stopped any layers um, getting crazy. And you know what you can actually do, which I have actually got it on at the moment. Once you're doing this layer, you can actually start on your second one. So I already have the lye pre-made. The lye is already sitting there. It's, all, um, it's already cooled down. So now each time what I'm doing is I'm just putting my butters in the slow cooker, letting them do their thing. Within an hour or two, um, they will actually be ready for me to actually use um, with my next layer. And that is the good thing because then what actually happens is this is hard enough for me to pour on the second one. So you could definitely do this all in one batch. Um, you know and give it a tap you can see and you can see this is already starting to 
um, set up a little bit not heaps but it was set up a little bit which is fine that's what we want isn't it so anyway we've done layer number two which is the beautiful purple and um, next I am going to be on to pink and then green so it will come right to the top it definitely will um, sometimes you know you might get to the top and go oh well I can't fit the yellow in and that's okay if that happens or you can make your layers a little bit smaller but this is generally what I do for mine but anyway it is ready I'm just going to give this a little spray on the top um, that's what I do to all of them it actually helps with the frosting and so on as well anyway I'll bring you back when we're ready for layout number three now I am back everybody you can see I have all of my oil in here uh, I also do have the pink I mean doesn't this just look glorious this is the pink that I've already made so I've already put all my um, butters in here that have melted down they're at room temperature oh, as well as my um, oil some olive oil castor oil and so on and for anyone that wants to know I do change my recipe quite a lot I do talk about this um, you know quite often so some people will have the same recipe for pretty much all of their soaps and then they just keep that for me I change it a bit because you know we're always learning as we go along as much as I love rice bran oil into um, soap it can make it creamy and so on olive oil is definitely my favorite out of all of them um, you know it does make a bit more of a softer um, bar but it just needs a much longer curing time and then you do need to do a bit of a water discount but that's what I found so it's definitely my favorite recipe using you know olive oil castor oil cocoa butter shea butter coconut oil so that's they're the main ones and of course your fragrance some sodium lactate and so on but anyway this is kind of my favorite sort of type to use these sort of ingredients so like I said we've got everything ready here next we do have some lye so let's just pour the lye straight in on here um, as well so let's just pop that in and now let's get our trusty you know um, what do we call it a stick blender so this is the bottom of my stick blender I've also already added in the sodium lactate and the only thing we're going to be adding in now once we've mixed all this up is the color and then of course we are going to go to the fragrance so let me mix this up and um, then we'll add some color so you can see it is quite mixed up now so we're going to add the color and then it will give us lots and lots of time to blend everything won't it so um, as I did say earlier remember always try your best uh, to you know make sure your colors are super duper mixed um, and if you just you know put this particular stick in here the soap element of it will help get all the mica off because mica is one of the pains in my opinion to get off I usually use um, you know like a wet wipe kind of thing to you know get off all the mica to the spoon if I need to get that off and of course I just keep a paper towel to the side anyway let's mix this up all right this is mixed up let's just quickly add in the bit of fragrance we'll mix it in and then pour it straight in now it has reached a trace so you can probably see the little tiny lines on top uh, but we don't want it to get too thick because this particular blend I'm using will make it thick if I just um, let that happen as well so let me just clean this off a little bit and then we'll um, pour this into the mold So here is the mold and this is you know getting quite firm so we're fine to pour it in I probably should have um, just poured in my rubbing alcohol but I forgot it's not the end of the world it will be fine um, because I've made it today so but if you make it a day before definitely it helps it adhere a little bit because it just means that it's sort of got a bit of a sticky in between um, but I've never had any of my layer soaps um, pull apart or anything but if they're too dry in between that may happen if you don't um, like I said keep something to sort of make it a bit more moist for them to stick so now I've done this bit isn't it looking beautiful this color give it a bit of a tap um, the tap just helps the air bubbles and now I'm going to just give this a spray we're going to leave this and my other one is already melting on there and then I'll come back to do the last one or two layers and then we are done with this darling soap 
hello everybody it is the next day and look how beautiful these colors are i hope you love them so you can see the blue is a nice blue then purple of course the pink green and, and yellow my daughter said the yellow looks like a banana color i actually quite like it i think the film's kind of making it look a little bit lighter than what it is maybe um the banana sort of top one does look a different color but anyway I really like them I think they're beautiful and I'm going to slightly change my bar sort of um you know the uh size I'm going to change it tiny bit so anyway let's get going I'm going to give this one a bit of a trim and I hope you're going to love the last result hello everybody we are back to cut the bars now i am doing the voiceover because i really needed to concentrate to make sure i got all of my measurements with the bars and the loaves right so i am using a slab cutter here this is from au cutters on etsy i'll leave the links uh, below in the description box so just check that out and we are just going to be cutting these now this is a slab of a roughly about six and a half kilos of soap so it is quite a big one you know look and there's lots of ways that you can do this you don't need to do what I've done and waited in between but that's just personally how I like to do rainbow soap um, and I hope everyone's going to love them I think they've turned out absolutely beautiful and as I said we're just cutting them so I did get several um, loaves out of this because I've changed the bar size so I think I ended up getting almost 60 bars of soap out of this sometimes I get 65 bars depending on on the size so I just have to play around a little bit um, with the size of them but going forward a lot of my goal is to literally pour directly um, straight into mini um, soap loaves and that way I'm not having to cut it they're going to literally be poured into bars but when I do these massive big slabs in the future I will still have to cut them and obviously do all the work that comes with that but like I said in between this I thought look let's just show everybody exactly what I do because there's a lot to do um, when you're doing soap there's just so much involved there really and truly is and um, when I started making soap I just had no idea the amount of work involved in cutting soap beveling the edges stamping it and so many more things but anyway like I said I've decided to try and sort of um, put a lot of it back into uh, individual molds rather than cutting this slab but for this one here we are cutting the slab and basically when you cut it you need the room because the bar's quite long so that's why I'm actually moving the soaps um, to the side but I did leave some of them on here so that you can see exactly what I do and you can see here once I slice a piece then I take it out and then I move the bar across and on one of the sides of this particular slab cutter it does have a really massive big sort of um, acrylic piece and you just um, literally drill that in to sort of screw it in I should say to the right measurements and it does have like a measuring tape so that you can see if you want it to be for instance two centimeters three four whatever you want it to be and then you can cut it now most times with this you're just going to literally cut the slab but my actual soap cutter I have another um, cutter which is just for the slices and it's actually broken so I had to do this the hard way by just keep sliding each bar as you can see and I'm just cutting them so if you can't afford two cutters I definitely say buy a loaf splitter like this and you can cut it and also do the loaves all in one go if you, you know like I said really can't afford to have two but most people would have a standard cutter and also this one just to split the bars so but there's many different sort of styles that you can do and my normal soap cutter which I will actually um, pop the link on here as well that's actually from Aussie Soap Supplies and I am um, I think it's just under $200 but it was a really great one the string has actually broken the wire snapped um, and I've been using it for over a year well over a year um, probably two years actually um, before uh, you know it snapped so I thought anyway 
I just hadn't fixed it yet. I've got to buy another wire to fix it. It's just a thin wire. You can get those as well, I think, from Aussie Soap Supplies. I just haven't ordered them yet. But anyway, I will definitely do that. But for now, like I said, we had to go through this whole process of cutting them all. And um, as I said, there's over 50 bars that it does cut. Now, with my boxes as well, I'm getting boxes made for all of these. So I needed these to fit a certain size because obviously I want every single box to be the same and as I did say I've decided to change the size um, of the bars to fit in the box and my whole idea is so that uh, when I get the boxes these will not be wrapped in plastic or shrink wrap or they won't be wrapped in anything they're just literally going to be the raw bar and it slides directly into the box now what that actually does is a few really good things it saves you money um, and it saves you money on time because time is money especially when you're doing lots and lots of products or you know you, if you do markets if you sell retail wholesale festivals ex expos there's so many things you can do uh, so you know that's all time and uh, the longer it takes to make something package it label it then um, of course that reads eats, eats into your time so anyway I hope you have enjoyed this video thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye everyone